Well, we're, I'm, I'm super excited to be announcing the third honoree. Um, we have a great lineup this year, and, and we're gonna we're gonna end up with with a, an outstanding scholar and leader, uh, Dr. Denise Taliaferro Bazil. Uh, she's our our third awardee of the Derek Bell Legacy Award for the Critical Race Studies and Education Association Conference this coming year. So we're excited to see her in Delaware. But before we go out there, I wanted to at least announce her and introduce her and let her give her give her a few minutes to say some words. Um, Dr. Taliaferro Bazile is a, has a PhD from Louisiana State University, as well as her master's degree. Uh, both of them are in curriculum and instruction. She's an expert in that field. Um, she has a BA from UCLA in communication studies. Um, and her dissertation work is very interesting, Education for Liberation as an Amer African American Folk Theory. Um, she has extensive experience, not only as a scholar and an expert in the field, but also uh, in leadership, which I think uh, for many of us who are in higher education, making decisions about being selfish and doing our own scholarship and helping universities, helping colleges develop their own leadership capacity and helping provide programs for our students is extremely important. So I'm interested to hear uh, what she has to say about that once we get to Delaware. Currently, she's the Associate Dean of Diversity and Student Experience in the College of Education, Health and Society at Miami University in Oxford, Ohio. But she's also served as a Director of Diversity Initiatives. She's an Associate Professor. Um, she, did some, uh, she did some work also at uh, Colgate University as well as has been in the classroom. She's an educator, both in LA and in Louisiana. So somebody who's in practice, somebody who's a public intellectual, um, she has over 30 scholarly works uh, in, in a number of uh, highly uh, refereed journal articles, book chapters. Uh, she's on the speaking circuit. She's done m many keynotes and has been in, uh, in, sp in academic spaces from AERA to AESA um, and, and, and obviously in Crescea. So it's my pleasure and I'm super excited to be able to award her uh, the D Derek Bell Legacy Award for 2021. Uh, I'll turn the time over. Thank you. Thank you so much. I am uh, super honored to receive this award. I don't, I, it's amazing because I don't, I was just having a conversation with somebody not too long ago where we were talking about awards and I, I, I was telling them that I don't worry about them in this environment because I know my work is very different and um, the field is so social science -y and I think uh, often say I might have landed in the wrong place because I'm very humanity uh, uh, artsy kind of um, person and, and it absolutely I think comes through in uh, in my work and um, uh, so it, this is it's always a pleasant surprise when I receive a award especially from my people especially from my people is super uh, important because first of all I always say critical race theory I feel like played a huge role in just saving my life because it just brought so much clarity to lots of things I was feeling and wanting to do and not really, um, you know, find the right sort of paradigm to sort of settle into. And critical race theory offered that. And especially I had an opportunity as a young scholar to actually meet uh, Derek Bell and to have dinner uh, with, with um, uh, Dr. Bell, and it was uh, it was life changing, you know, in terms of really being able to think about uh, the work that we do in the academy around this as activist work. I think I struggled early in my career to because I came from an activist sort of family background. Going into the academy was like you know working for the man. Kind yeah. of thing. <laughs> <laughs> I had to process like, you know, you know, you know what that meant and, and come to understand the work that I do every day here as a kind of activist um, work. And so uh, Dr. Bell was really instrumental in having that conversation with me as I think I was maybe in my first or second year as a professor at actually at Colgate University at the time. So, so I, um, and just again, is one of those conferences I, I i've been to almost every uh um 
Presa conference, I think. Uh, I might have missed one or two here or there, but from the very first one uh, at uh, uh, UIC, um, uh, where I was just like, oh, just, you know, where you, where all the work is sort of uh, reaffirming your, your thinking and your worldview around these uh, issues. And so it's, it's just been a real blessing to me and just to have the opportunity to, um, you know, work in the field, work with the paradigm and work in this sort of where we have these tensions between um, the writing and the scholarly work and the action on the ground. And for me, I really see um, what I really loved about critical race theory is that both of those are, they have to work together. And it's really, um, uh, you know, mutually sort of reinforcing dynamics and in the struggle, and they always have been. Um, and here now is a paradigm that actually forefronts that. Mm -hmm. um, work and it really in the notion that Derek Bell looks at it as a as a movement I think it was is it's exactly what made me feel like oh now this this feels like this feels like home it feels like home when I go to the conference when I pick up the journal and I read through the journal and I read the work of my colleagues and um, and I think in this very moment because of the craziness and all of the attacks that we just have to remember that this isn't the first time we've been here. Mm -hmm. uh, we've been here many times and we, we have to keep doing the work. Uh, it's, it's critical and it's critical not only to our own well-being, but to the well-being of the people who are actually also uh, pushing uh, against it. So, um, so I, you know, I'm, I'm just, I'm honored to be in the space and and I am um, looking forward to just many more years of doing the work with people that I love. Well, that's great. Yeah, we're, we're honored uh, to get your nomination and to be able to award you this year. I know we wanted to award you last year, but because of all the the cancellation that we had to go to go through, uh, thankfully, we we're able to get together in Delaware in a couple of weeks and be able to hand you the award. And you're right. I think I've been going, I was a brand new assistant professor when I went for the first time and it's always been that one conference where it's like family, you know, and, and so many of these other academic conferences, you know, you don't find spaces for us to just be around other folks that are doing similar work and going through similar struggles. Um, so it's just great to be able to honor you in that way. Yeah, I love the way we bring our own sort of traditions to the conference space that, that don't really happen in the other spaces. Like, I love this hooding ceremony uh, uh, idea. I think it's hugely important, you know, that we're doing that because that's also just strengthening our community. And community, I think, in this moment is like we really need to be practicing radical community almost in, in this moment. And, I always think of that, uh, uh, the saying from the uh, uh, Moten and Harney book on the undercommons, we owe each other everything. And that's, that's what I feel is, is when I think about the space of uh, um, Clisa. Do you still feel the same way? Just one question, I know we gotta go, but, but um... You mentioned early on that when you first started reading about the paradigm and the framework, uh, that it really helped inspire you and it felt like it gave you the lens that you needed. Do you still feel the same way about critical race theory as a as a framework? I mean, you've been in leadership. You're mm -hmm. in the middle of the country. You know, we're going through this racial reckoning, the whole thing with the pandemic. You know, folks are struggling economically. We're trying to come out of the pandemic. And now this assault with these so-called anti-critical race theory bills across the country and legislatures like the one here in my home state of Texas. Um, are you still hopeful about and, and do you still see the utility of kind of using and pushing forward critical race theories in our practice? Like you said, our practice, our activism and our scholarship, more traditional scholarship. I absolutely see that it's critical. And I mean, I think I'm always leaning on it, <clears throat> not just not in, just in what I write, but it's also about how I write, because that, that's the other thing that I've just, that has um, 
filled me up with Derek Bell's work is just the courage to do something different, to get off the academic template, um, mm -hmm. because that is disciplining us in a certain way as well and um, limiting our capacity to, um, you know, to reach, um, uh, you know, the freedom dreams that we're, that we're going for. So I think it's critical, in, but also in my leadership role, <laughs> And in my responsibilities around, because you know, it, it's soft DEI work. I always call them tokens of depreciation going on all around the university. And I feel like in a lot of universities, and I know in mine, it's like the wild, wild west of DEI right now. Yeah. And, and you know, I'm trying to stay grounded and really attentive to, um, um, to the ideas and concepts and you know, laid out in critical race uh, because that helps me. That's the criteria for me that if I'm going to do something, does it, you know, is it leaning in uh, in this way? And I, I don't see. I don't see. I mean, I know we could talk about many paradigms of race, but I, if you, if you're not engaged in this one, I don't know what you could be saying about what's going on right now. Right. Uh, uh, I, I think critical race theory is absolutely critical because it's helping us look deeper uh, than just the, the surface level ways in which we have uh, dealt with race or, or not thought about race at all, or just tried to sort of, you know, push it under um, the rug. And it's so complex and so dynamic, but I feel like, you know, critical race is that space that kind of opens it up. And, Ironically enough, I think there are a few things going on. One, I, I do absolutely, the business of CRT is to look at how um, race, uh, you know, racism almost acts as a kind of power, right? It's a sort of white supremacist power and to look at the systems, the structures, the institutions, but also in the value we place on counter storytelling, it is also engaging, I think, the personal in a way that we don't often think about it. And I always like to say, funky institutions and systems rely on opaque people, you know? Mm -hmm. And so to me, it opens the space too for doing a certain kind of self work that isn't obvious or, or doesn't overwhelm the agenda, but is still critical to the process because we are the system in some ways. We are the institution. And, um, you know, if we want to improve those circumstances, then we have to, we have to do the work. That's great. No, I love that. I love that. And I'm looking forward to having more conversations in Delaware. And uh, again, thanks for, thanks for, um, you know, always being there for the association. We just wanted to honor you. And I know it's not everything, but to have a Derek Bell Legacy Award that definitely speaks to your you know, what you've contributed, what you continue, continue to contribute. And, um, and so, yeah, folks can still register. Uh, we're going to have about, it looks like about 70% virtual, but the 30% of us in Delaware, we're going to have a good time. And, uh, yeah, we're, exactly, exactly. So thank you again. And, uh, congratulations. Thank you so much.